Yeah, it's got a bit of... I don't normally have a chance to do it, wait. Right then, another video. It looks warm out here, but it's not. It's, what is it? What day is it today? 4th of January. It's early in year anyway. So, while I were off, Nigel's dropped his uh, Passat off. If you watch the first video we did on this car, it's quite a bit back, but it gives you a, a bit of detail about this engine and this car and stuff. So watch that first before you watch this, if you didn't know anything about the CUAA 240 horsepower Passat engine. But Nigel is a bit crazy and uh, is the same person, if you watch the Green Laning video from the Lake District in the Tureg, he's the one in the Land Rover, taking for a little tour around there, showing me all the lanes. Absolutely crackers for taking a brand new Land Rover up. Some of them lanes are a bit scratchy, even for my liking. And it looks like he's took his Passat up a couple as well. So part of the reason it's here is for us to repair that in the body shop and touch all the little scratches up and stuff like that. I think you'll probably blame the missus for that, but I'll blame him anyway. I think what we'll do before we rip into it, we'll get some uh, acceleration results as it is now, compare them to factory. Maybe if we're a million mile away and we're not happy with what we've seen, we'll put it back to stock and run it again. But that might be tomorrow, not today's job. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna do things in stages this time. So the first job, Obviously, to see if the DPS gives us any restrictions, we're going to make a pipe, jig it up, and put them on the website because a lot of people ask us for them and we've never had a chance to do one. Whether that stays on this or not, we shall decide. Um, but the other thing as well, which we've got going on here, this is the big turbo, so it's one of two. So there's normally another turbo bolted onto this here and feeding in and bypass valves and all sorts of weird stuff going on hideously complicated all in the name of uh, making emissions better but basically what we've decided is what we try and do on the twin turbo stuff and it doesn't always work leave the standard the small turbo standard because it's not doing a lot of the work we're trying to make more power not more torque really so if we want more flow at the top end the big turbo is doing all the work then so we've got bigger turbine wheel and a bigger compressor wheel on this the specs are still to be confirmed, so I'm probably not going to release them just yet. But it's bigger. We'll see what it does. It might not work, but we shall see. I'm hoping before we put the turbo on, we can get a little bit nearer to the 300 mark, because that's where I want it to be with this anyway. But then we'll put the turbo on, see what we get, and see how that improves the real-world driving. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we need to do from our perspective. In between us talking... Nigel did buy one of these um, Aldex controllers from Van Der Veer Engineering. So, I don't know if he's got it any cheaper for saying that we're going to test it or whatever. I'm not sure, I doubt it. I just said, buy it yourself. Because if it's rubbish and don't really work as planned, we'll have to say that. But if it's absolutely amazing, might be another product to add onto our website. I'm not too sure, but Nigel bought this. Might make things a bit easier when we dyno it, just for the odd dyno running in there. You can just turn it off rather than unplugging it. But yeah, we'll see what happens and we'll uh, we'll get cracking. Oh, that stop start drives me mad. That's going on the jobs list. Turn the stop start off because that's how you kill turbos. For once, I've done my research. I don't normally do it, but as standard, these are just over six. Falling off here. So it's standard. These are just over six seconds to 60, 6.1, something like that. Or 100 kilometers an hour, so probably six seconds to 60 mile an hour. So, not slow, not ridiculously fast. It's never gonna be four seconds to 60 mile an hour like the uh, 330Ds and stuff like that. I don't know why that keeps talking to me. Drives me absolutely mad. Must just be set up. So anyway, we've got drag in here. Never used it. First time for me. Probably annoy me more than it'll help me. Well, oil's up to, oil's up to temperature and everything. It's been ticking over for a little while. Just warm it up a little bit more. It feels good. In gear in these. I do think 
just no need for it to be changing down gears all the time. Yeah, it's good that. Really happy. Good uh, throttle response, which is what you get with two turbos. Sixth gear, 1500 RPM. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Should have a bit of temperature into everything. A bit of temperature into the tyres, that's the main thing. Not like three degrees outside and it feels every bit. what the best way of doing it is but we'll turn the traction control off because it's four wheel drive don't need anything cutting which traction control is not going to um, not going to give us any more acceleration in theory it can only take it away So responsive this engine, really do like it. If you could have 300 horsepower on this throttle response, with a single turbo it would be awesome. So that is super aggressive. I'm sure it's doing engine mounts any good at in that hard. That was 4.98 to 60, he said. Which is pretty good. Happy with that. Obviously, we'll have to take it somewhere else if we want to get uh, somewhere off road to get more acceleration figures. So we'll, we'll put all them at the end when we've done everything. We'll, uh, I'll try and get some figures compare them to stock and stuff like that. Now we're 5.6 that time, but it hung in first gear, it just sat there for some reason. Hmm. I'll have to look into why that's doing that. I'm not sure if there's a gearbox tuning issue or something. But sub five seconds anyway. That's uh, good enough for now. So we're going to put it back on the dyno just as it's come. Make sure we're uh, happy with what it's doing. We'll get the DPF ripped off and get it in again. So there'll be a lot of this type of stuff going on. Hopefully the conditions stay very similar because it's absolutely freezing. God, it's two degrees now. Now the sun's gone in. Which will help power, but it will not help grip. So, we finally got this in the dyno. At the minute we've not done anything with the gearbox and I'm not sure if we're going to have time yet, we're pretty busy. So before we test it again and see what 0 6 if we can get, we need to stop it hanging between first and second. Not sure if it will do, nah, and we'll see what we've done, but we need to check that before we uh, go any further and get some accurate results. But anyway, it's been on the dyno, Matisse has done it, run it a few times and had a little play, and this is where we've ended up. So. 287 is the tune that it came in on, and that will get in quoted at 320 horsepower to the customer. And as you can see, obviously I'm not, I'm comparing the, the pink and the red, so the pink and the red is ours. At the top end of the red, the pink one does hold on a little bit longer, which you'd think were desirable, but that's ignoring the exhaust gas temperatures, which were basically all the correction, all the limiters were just taken away. And I think that will get up to nine, 970 degrees centigrade, which is, DPF melting territory. When the armor rocks do that, the DPF just escapes through the exhaust eventually. So, like we've seen that from Revo tunes and stuff like that. But anyway, 
when I was driving it, I thought it felt as good as it could do at the bottom end, but Matisse has managed to squeeze some more out torque-wise. This little dip here, you're not really going to feel it on the road. It'd be nice to smooth it out, but that's just the sort of change over between the two turbos. Knowing what we're going to do with this, you see it's got it as standard, but it's a bit more exaggerated. Knowing what we're going to do with this, there's no point spending ages trying to dial that out because we're going to end up with the same problem later on. Um, and as you can see, 227 horsepower standard. So, oh dear, it's quite a bit down, on, well, not quite a bit down on, a few percent down on what it should have been standard. But torque's pretty nice and flat. They do feel pretty quick standard, these anyway. So, and then power wise, 292, so it's only five horsepower more, but as you can see, it's spread out. The only, the only point that it sort of starts getting to where it's the same or less is 4,000 RPM, 4,200 RPM upwards. So, really happy with that. Really limited by the exhaust temperatures there. So, I think what we'll probably do, we'll get the DPF ripped out, then we'll do our testing, see how much cooler the exhaust temps are and then we'll see how much quicker it is on the road, 0-60. Whether that's part of this video or not, I'm not sure, it probably. Danny will know better than I will how much footage we've got and what we need to do, but it's probably going to be the next video, so next time we'll see what one of these will actually do with a cork taken out of the exhaust. I don't think it's going to be massive amounts more power. We sort of we are in the point where it's making more power with RPM and we're limited on the RPMs with the exhaust temperature, so I think it will make a bit more. Matisse thinks not. I think it might make a little bit. If we just nudge past 300, that'll do us for now. And then we need to get um, we need to get the big turbo on there and see how we go. So anyway, I digress. We need to get this off quick, get into the workshop. So wish us luck. <laughs>